Hello, everyone. Welcome. Hopefully you're in the right place. So this is our webinar on why you should accept membership into Phi Theta Kappa. It's kind of cool to see people as they come in or not actually see y'all, but see the number go up. So it looks like we have 23 participants in the room with us right now. Hopefully that number will continue to grow. Um, let me introduce myself. My name is Ariel Charbonnet. I'm the Associate Vice President of Membership Services at Phi Theta Kappa. And I am joined by several of my colleagues and I'll let Melissa introduce herself first. I'm Melissa Price. I am the Lead Divisional Specialist in the Membership Department. And Paige is also here. Paige, can you introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Paige Still, and I'm the Membership Services Senior Specialist for Division Three. And we have two of our international officers on with us. So Tyler, can you introduce yourself to everyone? Yeah. Hi, guys. Um, my name is Tyler McKenzie. I'm the International Vice President for Division Three. Awesome. And then Jenna. Hi, everybody. I'm Jenna. I'm your International Vice President for Division One. So we are all here today to talk to you about really what Phi Beta Kappa is um, and what sort of membership benefits we offer. There may be a mix of people on the webinar right now. So let me give some housekeeping rules just so that you're familiar with how this setup works if you haven't attended one of our webinars before. So we cannot see or hear you. So it's really important that you use the Q&A box and the chat box that you see on your screen. So definitely ask us questions. That's what we are here for. We really, really, really want to answer the questions that you have. So make sure you type it in the chat box and type it in the Q&A box. And really, the questions should go in the Q&A box. And if you have other commentary, um, you can put it in the, the chat box. So. I just want to make sure I tell everyone that. So we can't see you, we cannot hear you. So the only way that you can ask us a question right now is if you type it in the Q&A box. So make sure that you ask us questions um, throughout the presentation. Um, we do have a presentation and I'll share my screen with you all in a little bit to give you the basics of Phi Theta Kappa. Um, maybe you've gotten an invitation already. You've gotten an email um, from either headquarters or from your advisor, and you're trying to make a decision about whether you want to join Phi Theta Kappa. Um, it's a big decision, especially if you don't know anything about the organization that's emailing you. So hopefully we can enlighten you and just answer all of your burning questions and help you make this decision. Um, because we know it's a it's a big one. It's a significant one. So let me share my screen one second. Okay, can Jenna, Tyler, Melissa, Paige, can y'all see my PowerPoint right now? Okay, good deal. Um, so I'm going to go through the PowerPoint that we have today. And for all of the attendees on right now, I do want to make sure I say that we are recording this and we'll send out the link to anyone who contacts us um, if they want to share it with other prospective members on their campus or they want to show it later on, we're happy to share this with you all. Um, also, if you happen to ask a question in the Q&A box or in the chat box and we don't get to it for some reason, um, know that we do get a transcript of the Q&A box and the chat box and we will definitely follow up with you. And if I don't say this, I'm going to say it now. You can always reach out to us um, at headquarters. And the easiest way to get in touch with us is email us at help at ptk.org, or you can give us a call. And Melissa, correct me if I butcher the phone number because I have a tendency to do that, but it is 1-800-946-9995. Did I get it right? 
You've got it right, Ariel. And we have a question right off the bat. If, oh. I don't know if you guys want to go ahead and take it because it is a really good question. That's um, you. We have an anonymous attending and they have an, a recruitment event tomorrow and they are a new member and they want to know what are some of the points they can use when someone asks them about the Honor Society and why they should join? That's a great question. Um, I think we're going to answer that question in a few slides. And so I'm going to hold off on answering that because I'm going to answer it in way a lot of detail um, in just a second. And then afterwards, I can hit the high points of what you should do. Um, that was a great question. I love that y'all are already asking questions. It means y'all are really engaged. So let me go ahead and get started. So all of you should see my screen right now. Um, and this is just the mission of Phi Theta Kappa. So Phi Theta Kappa is an honor society. And we primarily serve community college students, but we also recognize students at four-year universities. The mission of Phi Theta Kappa is to recognize the academic achievement of college students and provide opportunities for them to grow as scholars and leaders. Um, it's a really simple mission. We've been around for 101 years. So we are well established and the mission has not really changed much in a century. So we're really proud of the work we do and we're happy to talk about it with you all. This is a brief look at who our members are. And I think it's important because we have members from all walks of life, from all backgrounds. We have chapters in 11 nations and all together we have almost 1300 chapters. And our chapters are located primarily, like I said, on the colleges or on the campuses of community colleges. And so if you've received an invitation, more than likely you're attending a two-year school or a community or a technical college. Um, we've been around a long time. So we have inducted more than three and a half million students since we first started in 1918. Um, and you'll see some of the statistics about our members. Our members have an average GPA of a 3.6. The average age is 28. And that's a question that we get a lot too. Like we have a lot of non-traditional students who um, want to know if they'll fit into Phi Theta Kappa. Let me tell you now that we have students who are 12. We have students who are 85. We have students who are 60. Um, and we have students from all majors, all backgrounds. And that's one of the beauties of Phi Theta Kappa. Um, so yes, all of you are welcome to join. Um, more than half of our members are female and more than half are also federal aid recipients of the Pell Grant. So just quickly, like I said, Phi Theta Kappa is in 11 nations and we have um, a system where we're broken up into four divisions. So you'll see they're color coded on the map here. We have division one, which is primarily the east coast of the US. Division two is basically the southern portion, southeast portion of the US. Division three is sort of central USA and Paige, who's on here with us today, is actually the person who mans division three in all of its glory. And division four is the west coast. So we have a staff member at headquarters who is devoted to each division. So we have a division one specialist, a division two specialist, and so on. So take a look at the map and if you have gotten an invitation, um, look and see what division you belong to. And we'll share contact information for the appropriate person at headquarters who would be your main contact. You may be wondering, okay, so how do you become a member of Phi Theta Kappa? So it's by invitation only, first know that. So you have to be invited to join and you're invited to join if you meet your local chapter's eligibility criteria. Um, your best resource before I get into the specifics is always, always, always going to be the advisor who works at your college. So every chapter of Phi Theta Kappa has an advisor and that advisor is employed by your school. So if you ever have questions about, are you eligible? Why didn't I get an invitation? How can I get involved? You can always talk to your advisor. 
And a quick URL that I always give out to locate your advisor is ptk.org slash advisor search. Um, like I said, we're all real people here. That's important to note, like we're not robots. We're not making these things up. We're all real. Your advisor is a real human being and your advisor really does work at your school. Um, most of the time it's a faculty member. So you may have had your advisor as a teacher or a professor. Um, and so it's important to note that. Okay, so are you eligible? If you've gotten an invitation, rest assured you're eligible, you're in there. Um, if you haven't gotten an invitation either by snail mail or by email, um, these are some of the things to be on the lookout for. So one, you have to be at a college where there's a Phi Theta Kappa chapter. That's the first thing. The second thing is typically you have to have completed 12 hours of coursework that apply to your degree program. Um, every college and chapter operates a little bit differently. Uh, so at one chapter, you may have to have completed 12 hours at another chapter. It might be 15 hours, but for the most part, most chapters operate based on a 12 credit hour um, guideline. Um, but it's a little bit different if you're in a certificate program. So for, your, for our career tech students, we are very welcoming of all of you because we have membership benefits that cater to students who transfer and that cater to students who go right into the workforce. So if you're at a school um, that offers one year certificate degree programs, you have to have completed at least six hours of credit. And then here's the GPA kicker. So our minimum GPA and you know internationally is a 3.0. We require that all of our chapters have at least a 3.0 GPA minimum. Um, but most chapters have a 3.5 GPA. So for your chapter, more than likely your GPA eligibility criterion is around a 3.5 GPA. But again, every chapter is a little different. So one chapter might have a 3.75 GPA required to get you in. Another chapter might have a 3.5. Um, so again, your best resource is your local chapter advisor. Um, and then be on the lookout for an invitation. We send out invitations, your advisor sends out invitations, um, and we typically email them. And so I do want to make sure I mention to check your spam folder, check your junk folder, because sometimes our invitations do land there. So be on the lookout if you haven't already gotten one, you should get one if you meet these eligibility criteria. Um, and if you meet these eligibility criteria, but you haven't yet gotten an invitation, go and talk to your advisor. I cannot emphasize that enough. Okay, so this is a slide that really goes over why sometimes students don't accept membership into Phi Theta Kappa because we send out invitations. We're trying to recruit you all who represent the top 10% of your class because really those are the students who are invited to membership to, to accept membership in Phi Theta Kappa, the ones who are at the very top of their game. And then we're like, well, what is happening? They're not accepting. So these are the reasons that we typically hear about why students don't accept membership. I don't have the time. I'm about to transfer, so what would Phi Theta Kappa do for me? What is Phi Theta Kappa? Like, what, what, what is this about? I can't afford it because we do have a one-time lifetime membership fee. And then I'm about to complete school. What can Phi Theta Kappa do for me? So now, Jenna and Tyler, do you have any experience with students who have told you this or maybe you yourself have thought about it or maybe it took you a few times before you accepted? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I'll start. Um, personally, I went through basically this whole list. Um, honestly, my at my college, the membership fee, um, it's, it's not too bad. It's, it's an investment. It's a small investment. And before I like to do, I like to give my money anywhere. I like to do a little bit of research. So I didn't know what PTK was. So I looked into it. Um, I was already really busy. I was the president at the School of Honors in my college, which is entirely separate from PTK. I was working three jobs, five classes, you know, I had a lot going on. 
So I didn't really know if I could handle another um, responsibility. But after doing some research, I realized that PTK doesn't really require much. It just requires you to keep your GPA up, which I knew I was going to do anyway. Um, and you could take it as, as much of a dose as you want. You could, you could be really involved or you can just be minimally involved and get the recognition that you deserve. So um, I did go through the I have no time. Um, I wasn't about to transfer, but I've never heard of PTK. I could barely afford it. Um, and I didn't really know how it would help me in general. But you know, do some research. You're here, so this is a good start. <laughs> Tyler, what about you? Yeah, um, based on my personal experience, pretty much just like what uh, Jenna spilled out, um, I thought I had little to no time, but um, you really get out of PTK what you put in. And once I got involved in it, I realized that um, it was such a wonderful organization that I could get so many opportunities out of. And it wasn't just, um, you know, an obstacle or a burden. It was a fun experience. And that's why I continue to uh, step up in the leadership positions. Um, a lot of the common reasons that I get from my friends that I try to convince joining, especially at my job at Texas Roadhouse, um, my, one of my coworkers, she goes to a different community college and she's like, so I got an invitation to Phi Theta Kappa. I know you're the Phi Theta Kappa guy. Should I join? Um, I was like, uh, absolutely. Um, but she was worried because she was considered a non-traditional student. And um, she was afraid of like what Ariel mentioned earlier of not fitting in. But let me tell you, Phi Theta Kappa, it's an organization that's all about diversity. We celebrate diversity and we want that diversity to be in the organization because we get brand new ideas and different inputs from a variety. Um, and, you know, one of my best friends that I met through Phi Theta Kappa is a non-traditional student. She, um, you know, she's in her late 40s, uh, was married and has kids. And we talk every day. She just took me to IHOP yesterday. Uh, so you really never know what you're going to get out of PTK until you actually just take that, that leap of faith. And I highly encourage you doing it. I always learn something new when I hear y'all talk. Um, so I appreciate your testimony and your honesty about Phi Theta Kappa because um, genuinely and legitimately, we hear these things every day. And so at headquarters, we always are trying to communicate the value of Phi Theta Kappa um, to students who just are on the fence about it. Um, and so Jenna and Tyler really offered it in the best possible way through their eyes. So just to reiterate what they said already, um, you get out of Phi Theta Kappa what you put into it. If you have the time to devote to going to meetings and service projects and um, getting more involved on your campus with your chapter. That is awesome. That is amazing. If you don't have the time, then we understand um, Phi Theta Kappa is truly about what you make of it. And so we understand that sometimes you have work, you have family obligations, you have a really particularly difficult semester. Um, and so nothing happens to your membership if you decide not to participate. You still are a member. So just make sure you remember that. I'll talk more about the benefits of Phi Theta Kappa and how we have benefits that cover every stage of your college career. Whether you are about to transfer, whether you're about to enter the workforce, um, whether you still have a year plus at your community college. We have membership benefits that cater to everyone. Um, the, the one, two, three, the fourth bullet point down, I can't afford it. We hear that all the time. And we realize that financially, a one-time membership fee could be problematic for some students. And so we have initiatives in place at headquarters. One is called the Golden Opportunity Membership Fee Waiver. And it's a program where your advisor has to nominate students who demonstrate financial need. And then we waive the majority of the membership fee. 
Um, and so if you are interested in joining Phi Theta Kappa, but you know that financially it would be hard for you right now, go and talk to your advisor and mention the golden opportunity membership fee waiver. Um, also, you'd be surprised because your college oftentimes has programs in place that help support your membership. So ask about those programs and ask about assistance. Okay, next slide here. So here is the overall structure of Phi Theta Kappa. Jenna and Tyler are probably cringing because their photo is on the screen right now, <laughs> but they're two of our international officers. So Phi Theta Kappa is kind of broken up into three levels. We have an international level, a regional level, and a local level. So the international level is basically headquarters staff, uh, the board of directors, and our international officers. Headquarters is actually located in, let me do this. Why don't you comment in the chat box and tell me where headquarters is located? Because that's the question that I ask and I'm, I, I'm always baffled by the responses that we get. So Melissa, make sure you tell me what sort of answers we get about where Phi Theta Kappa headquarters is located. So I'm not gonna tell you just yet. Um, and hopefully my accent doesn't give it away. <laughs> so just take a guess. Okay, so then we have a regional level. So right below the international level, we have regional coordinators and we have regional officers and we have regional advisory boards. So if you remember that map I showed y'all, um, we have four divisions, but we're also broken up into regions. So we have st neighboring states that make up one region and we have 29 of those regions. So the regional coordinators are sort of the, the people who supervise all of the chapters in that particular region. And then the most important level is the local level because that's the level where our chapters are located. So we have 1300 chapters all across the US and throughout the world. And that's where our advisors are, our officers are, and our chapter members and alumni are. So we have three different tiers of Phi Theta Kappa. Okay. This slide really starts to get into the membership benefits of Phi Theta Kappa. And let me back up one minute. I said there was a one-time lifetime membership fee. And you may be wondering, or if you haven't already asked, maybe somebody has asked already, how much is it to join Phi Theta Kappa? So on average, it's about 75 to $80. And let me tell you a little bit more about that. We have a $60 international fee, and then we have a local fee that your chapter charges and a regional fee that your region charges. And the fee in total actually differs depending on what chapter you're in and depending on what region you're in. Your chapter might charge a $5 chapter fee that goes toward um, maybe refreshments or travel for your chapter. Um, so we have some chapters that charge $0 for their local fee and other chapters that may charge five or $10. And then regions do the same thing. We have regional conferences. And so some regions will charge a couple of dollars. Um, I know Florida has a $2 regional fee. That one sticks out to me for some reason. Um, and other regions have a $0 regional fee. So on average, it's 75 to $80. You do pay it one time. It's so important that I say it's a one-time fee. You don't pay it every six months. You don't pay it every year. You pay it one time and you're a member for life. So I wanna make sure I say that. So involvement. Involvement or engagement is definitely encouraged, highly encouraged, but like I said, it's not required. Nothing will happen to your membership if you don't do something for Phi Theta Kappa, um, but you get so much out of it when you do become involved. So probably one of the first things that happens is you, if you accept, you go to an induction ceremony. Um, and your chapter puts on an induction ceremony. And it's a special way to recognize the hard work and achievement that you have invested in yourself, because really this is totally an investment in yourself. Um, I can't phrase it another way because you really have to prioritize you. So at the induction ceremony is when you're recognized for the hard work that you've done. 
some chapters have super fancy induction ceremonies um, with banquets and um, a sit down dinner. Other chapters have a really informal induction ceremony with um, pom poms and sort of just like a good informal time. So it depends on what your college puts on and what fits your, your college. Um, so that's one of the first ways that you can become involved. Other ways are definitely serving as a chapter officer. We have opportunities for leadership at every level of Phi Theta Kappa. So Jenna and Tyler are at the very top. You know, they're international officers. Um, but you can start off as a chapter officer and then build your way up. Maybe you wanna become a regional officer after that. And then maybe you do want to run for international officer. Um, other ways to be involved are um, plentiful, and that really depends on your college. We have some colleges that put on awesome service activity events. We have some colleges that partner with local high schools and they do peer mentoring. Um, we have some chapters who engage with other organizations on campus to host events. So it really depends on what your college does. Jenna and or Tyler, I'd love to hear about your experience being um, an international officer or in any other capacity really that's spoken to you as a Phi Theta Kappa member. Yeah, um, um, I'd like, could I go first, Jenna, for this, just this time and then um, I'll just jump on. Uh, so I started out as just a chapter member, obviously. Um, I didn't know too much about Phi Theta Kappa and um, I knew that I wanted to be a part of the organization because it emphasized community involvement and campus involvement. And I love my college and it gave me the platform to really um, go out and serve uh, those aspects. So one example of which that my chapter did, we did a duffel bag drive for our honors in action project. There's various projects that you do at, uh, within your local chapter um, one is the college project and one is the honors in action project. Uh, if you guys have any more questions over specifically what those are, um, our divisional specialists will be more than happy to help you on that. But I'm going to cut it a little briefly. Um, basically, the honors in action project is more associated with the community and the college project is obviously more geared towards your college. So we, my chapter raised duffel bags um, for foster home kids and we donated them to three counties in Oklahoma and we even got Dr. Pepper to match however many bags we raised. We raised over 500 bags. So that was truly something amazing to be a part of. Um, you know, I got the benefit of feeling that I gave back to my community. Um, so then I wanted to go further. Uh, I ran for regional office I ran for regional president and I went through the whole campaign process at the regional convention. Uh, my region is Oklahoma, Arkansas. Um, you have two conferences. You have one in the fall and the spring. The spring is typically when you do the election process. Um, and when I ran, you know, I thought I would put up a really good campaign, but at the end of the day, I lost. And I thought that I had let everyone down and that I wasn't good enough to be in a higher leadership position in this amazing organization. Um, but then I realized that nobody cared whether or not I would won, but whether or not I was proud for how far I came. And that's just another benefit of Phi Theta Kappa. You get these wonderful people that are like-minded as you are, and they just push you and motivate you to be the best version of yourself. Um, so I didn't let that defeat be the obstacle to prevent me from going further. Eventually, one of the regional officers stepped down. I was able to step in later in the year, and I was able to be a part of the regional officer team and work on the regional level, and we ended up turning our region from a three-star to a five-star region by the end of the year. Uh, then I ran for international office, and um, here I am today. Uh, I was elected into office, and now my platform has expanded um, on the international level where I get to travel to various regions and touch so many people's lives about my story and teach members like you on how you can uh, be a better version of yourself and what you can do for the organization and what you can get, get out of it. So that's been my experience, um, Jenna. 
My experience is very different. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, when I first got the invitation to be a member, I was really busy. Um, well, honestly, I've been really busy this whole time, but <laughs> anyway, I found this. Time. But anyway, I the level of involvement that I was giving to PTK was minimal. I actually, for the first year I was a member, I wasn't doing anything for the organization. Um, my membership was kind of just sitting there because I was still in my community college. So I just had it unlocked, but I wasn't utilizing it in any way. Um, then I um, got introduced to a bunch of Phi Theta Kappa members and they were telling me about this project that they were doing, as Tyler mentioned, the Honors in Action in College project. So um, as a regular member, I started getting really involved in the Honors in Action project and I um, started being like a, a leader of the Honors in Action project. And then that led me to my, my um, chapter officer position. So from there, I became a chapter officer. Um, we actually, we had a really successful Honors in Action project. Um, and it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed hanging out with the other Phi Theta Kappa students at my college. And then I got introduced to the international officer position. And so there's a, I didn't climb the traditional chapter officer, regional officer, international officer ladder. I went from chapter officer, ran for international office, and I won, and here I am. Um, so you don't, you, like I said earlier, you take it as, as you want. You, you do, this is yours to work with. You can do whatever really you want with this organization. You can get involved or you don't have to, and you could get involved in different ways. Um, but what I did notice was the more I was involved, the more friends I made. And I really, truly, genuinely mean that. I, I made some of my best friends at my college campus and in less than a year, we were driving across the country with each other, literally. Like we, we got that close that fast because we spent a lot of time together and we were so like-minded. And now, you know, I have Tyler and, and James and Neville and Adrian who are the other international officers from all over the country. I'm from New Jersey, Tyler's from Oklahoma, but we're like best friends now. So, you know, um, there's a lot you can get out of this, personal development, professional development, transfer tools, but also friends too. Thank you guys so much. This reminds me of, if anybody, so let me do a plug. We have awesome social media. So I was looking at our social media yesterday and we had a chapter go live from Arizona. And this is our awareness week right now. So all of our chapters are doing lots of activities to promote Phi Theta Kappa. And there was a chapter in Mesa, Arizona who went live and they went around their chapter and they said basically like, what's been the biggest asset or benefit that you've gotten from Phi Theta Kappa? And every single person said the friends that they had made. And there's so many of those benefits, but Honestly, the more I talk to students and the more I hear from students, that's the first thing that comes out of their mouths. Like, it's the friends I've made. It's the fellowship that I've gotten from Phi Theta Kappa. Um, and so you really do kind of find your tribe when you start, you know, going to Phi Theta Kappa events and meetings. Um, and so it's such, a, it's such an important part of your higher education journey and just your journey as a student and trying to navigate this crazy thing called life. So I appreciate y'all for sharing that so much. Um, I'm gonna move on to some other benefits because we have amazing benefits. And before I forget, did anybody guess correctly where headquarters is? Did anybody guess at all? Yes? Yes, we had someone guess Mississippi. And so I said, well, we need you to be Tell me the city and state. And so someone just came back and did say Jackson, Mississippi, which is correct. Yes, that is correct. So we're, headquarters is based in Jackson, Mississippi. Um, most people don't realize that. They think we're um, somewhere else, but we are in Jackson, Mississippi. Of course, Tyler and Jenna are not in Jackson, Mississippi right now, um, but headquarters is located there. Okay, more benefits. So we have tons of scholarship access to everyone who's on the webinar right now. Um, and don't feel <laughs> ashamed if you join Phi Theta Kappa to have access to scholarships. That is completely okay. You join for whatever reason you need to join Phi Theta Kappa. Um, but we have access, we provide access to about $90 million in scholarships. And that includes about 46 million in transfer scholarships 
from various four-year universities. So the cool thing about Phi Theta Kappa is we've developed strong partnerships with about 800 universities throughout the U.S. Um, and those universities offer transfer scholarships to Phi Theta Kappa members exclusively. So if you're a Phi Theta Kappa member, at some four-year universities, you're, you, you're going to get an automatic scholarship. Um, at other four-year universities, this is a, even cooler, if you're a chapter officer, you may get a stipend just for being a Phi Theta Kappa chapter officer. Um, if you're a regional officer or an international officer, you may get a little bit more. It totally depends on the university you attend and the parameters that have been set around those Phi Theta Kappa transfer scholarships. But that is one of our biggest um, assets is that we partner with 800 universities and those universities administer scholarships to our members. Um, we also offer scholarships that we at Phi Theta Kappa headquarters administer. So right now we're in our scholarship season. Our deadline is actually in one month, actually one day shy of one month because the deadline is October 25th. So if anyone on here right now is interested in scholarship access, um, I definitely recommend you go to ptk.org and click on the scholarships tab and poke around and look at the eligibility requirements of the scholarships there because you'd have about a month to apply. Also, we have regional and international events. So Jenna and Tyler actually mentioned this a little bit. We have regional conferences. So at, we have 29 regions and every region, typically they have a fall conference and a spring conference um, to sort of gather all of the members, all of the officers and all of the chapters in their region together to celebrate, to talk about their honors and action projects, to be recognized and just to fellowship. Our two huge international events are one, one thing, Catalyst. So our international convention is called PTK Catalyst. And that convention happens every single April. Um, and we have about 4,000 attendees. Last year we were in Kansas City. This year we're going to be, or actually in 2020, we're gonna be in Dallas, Texas. So we're really excited about Catalyst. I, I don't know how to describe it per se because it's not your average convention. Um, it's sort of like one person, I can't remember who described it this way, but this is how I've heard it described, like a mix between the Grammys or the Oscars and a concert because it's crazy. I mean, like there's so much that happens at our annual convention and it's like, it's every single thing you could possibly want. You can go to an ed forum and get information on transferring. You can play human foosball. Um, so I'm not even joking. That's, that's what happens at our conventions. So that happens every single April. And then we have another international event called Honors Institute, which is a really cool um, event that we put on every summer. We have about 500 or so attendees all descend on one college campus and that college campus is a four-year school and so our attendees will reside on campus in the residential facilities and they'll eat in the cafeteria and the whole point of honors institute is really to dig into academic research and really hone in on your honors in action topic and learn more about the topics that we have that year and so you go on um, city as text experiences, meaning you travel out into the local area and really learn about the history of that area. Um, you meet with your seminar group and you talk about the work that you've done at your chapter and at the Institute. So it's a cool way to really connect with other Phi Theta Kappans who you probably would never have interacted with. Um, and this question really goes out to Melissa, Paige, Tyler, or Jenna. Can you talk about any of your experiences at Catalyst or at Honors Institute, or maybe even a regional conference that's been particularly cool or you know you really really enjoyed? Sure. Um, so I went to the last two years um, for Catalyst. Uh, my first Catalyst was in Kansas City. Um, and that happened to be our 100th annual um, 
basically like existence of Phi Theta Kappa. So they made it a massive event. They decked out the entire city block. There was like PTK lights on skyscrapers. It was insane. Uh, we had a lot of members there um, and I was brand new. So I was just mesmerized. I was like, oh my gosh, this is Phi Theta Kappa. This is insane. And uh, the whole hotel was rented out for um, Phi Theta Kappa members. And we would all kind of just migrate to the actual convention center. And like what Ariel said, it's like the Grammys and a concert mixed together. It really is. Everyone dresses up very formally on the last night. Um, the girls like to bring out their prom dresses again. <laughs> uh, and guys wear their tuxes. And, um, you know, you get recognized for all your hard work that you do throughout the year. And there's competitions where you receive awards and there's a, a scholarship walk. Um, and then, of course, there's the international officer elections. And um, if you run for that position, you go through the process um, and you speak on stage. Uh, it, and that's what I did last year in um, or this last April in Orlando. Um, and that was even even more intense. But. Yeah, it's definitely an experience that is nothing like you would ever have. So, an honors institute, um, it's more academic focused. Uh, and we just had ours in June in San Diego, California. So, that's another thing. You get a lot of traveling associated with these conferences that you may not have the opportunity to do so um, outside of PTK. Um. So this past Catalyst in Orlando was my first one and I didn't know what to expect and I was absolutely blown away. Um, but Tyler pretty much covered um, the event. Like it's, it's crazy, they, they go all out and it's a lot of fun. Um, Honors Institute was a lot of fun too. That was different, it's more academic based, but um, being able to go to, so Honors Institute is hosted at colleges like, or universities. Um, so this one was hosted at San Diego State University. And as a community college student, I don't really get the opportunity to see what it's like to live in a dorm room or you know, walk to a food court. So, so doing that was really um, interesting and it helped me gauge life after I graduate from my community college. Um, and then the regional conferences. So like I said, I wasn't too involved in PTK, but once I knew I wanted to run for international office is when I started getting in more and more involved. And I've been to a few regional uh, conferences. So I'm from the Middle States region, which is a pretty large region. We are in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Maryland, and Washington, DC. So there's a lot of the states in this one region. Um, and they're just a ton of fun because you get to spend the weekend with a bunch of like-minded like students from around you. So, you know, you can, um, sometimes I know chapters collaborate with each other. Like Bergen, my school has like a sister chapter partnership with um, a school nearby. So um, to have close ties to people around you is, is fun too. Thank you guys for sharing. Um, you do get the opportunity to travel a lot when you're in Phi Theta Kappa. And that's just not to um, our international events, that's to regional conferences as well. Um, so for some chapters, it's quite an experience to like all pile up into a car or a van and go to a regional event. Like that's definitely a peak of their year because it's such a bonding experience. Um, I would definitely recommend if you become a member to go to at least one regional meeting. It's something you wouldn't want to miss. Um, we do. Have, oh, yeah. Sorry. No, Can I mention one thing? Um, for me, um, I know it's not all about me, but um, we get a lot of um, fun when we're able to travel here, the headquarters staff. And there's two that stand out to me. And it's it goes back to some of the speakers that we get to come to our annual conventions in my very, well, I have two favorites. And the first one is when I got to meet John Legend when we got to go to San Antonio, Texas. And he came out and was playing on the piano. I FaceTimed my kids and said, I just, don't you hate my job that I have? And they weren't happy with me, but that's okay. Um, and then the next one is, I'm all about the reality TV shows and Jennifer Arnold from The Little People, um, I got to meet her and her husband, and 
they are just the nicest people. So those are the two that stand out to me that I was able to, to be involved in. So I just had to mention that. I'm so glad you mentioned that because every time you talk about meeting John Legend, I was like, oh my God, I wish I would have been at Phi Theta Kappa so I could have met him. But um, yeah, we have awesome speakers, everyone. I didn't even mention that. The caliber of our speakers at convention is really bar none. Um, we really blow it out of the park with the speakers that we bring to convention. So we have world-renowned musicians, we have um, mathematicians, we have world travelers, we have um, famous chefs. It, they, it really covers every sort of walk of life. So that is really an important part of attending our, our events. Um, another benefit that we offer, oh, Tyler, please go ahead. Sorry, I just wanted to hop on that. Yeah, please? my first Catalyst in Kansas City, they got um, TED Talkers there, uh, one of which was Amy Cuddy. She's got millions of views on YouTube and we were able to sit in and listen to her in person. And that was just amazing. Yes, I, totally. Another one was Susan Cain. She's the author of Quiet. I mean, it was kind of like a highlight just personally to be able to experience that in person. Um, so again, if you all are interested in just travel and fellowship and learning from these folks, um, your peers and others, please consider joining Phi Theta Kappa. I really can't say enough about that. Um, another benefit that I definitely want to mention is PTK Connect. Um, if you are interested in transferring, if you're interested in getting a scholarship to a four-year school, if you're interested in figuring out what your career path should be, we have a tool for you and it's called PTK Connect. It's super easy to navigate, but it is a membership benefit. So once you join Phi Theta Kappa, you have access to this database of colleges and it really curates your search for you so you can figure out what your best fit school is. So if you wanna check it out, you should definitely go to ptk.org and click on Get Connected. It's really an awesome resource. Um, I do want to make sure I talk a little bit about our PTK EDGE curricula. So we offer a ton of membership benefits. I've said that before, um, from scholarship access to fellowship to leadership building. Um, but we also offer online self-paced curriculum that really try to benefit and mold you as a, as a budding professional as, and as a student. And so we have three curricula that we um, promote to our members. We have Competitive Edge, Transfer Edge, and Employment Edge. Competitive Edge is really all about building your soft skills. Um, Transfer Edge is one of our newer programs and it teaches you um, and gives you insight really on transferring to a four-year school. And then Employment Edge is brand new. It actually just launched on August 1st and it's more process oriented with helping you land a job, either an internship or um, your first job out of college. One of my favorite aspects of Employment Edge is the emphasis we put on two things. One, negotiating your salary, because that is an important part of your professional repertoire, is actually knowing and having the skills on how to negotiate a salary. The other part of Employment Edge that's my favorite is our emphasis on building your online or your social media reputation because it's so important nowadays, especially for younger community college students and really students in general to make sure that their online reputation matches their real life reputation. Um, and we teach you how to do that in Employment Edge. I know y'all probably have done Competitive Edge. Any thoughts or reactions about Competitive Edge, Jenna or Tyler? Yeah, so um, actually I have done Competitive Edge, Employment Edge, and I'm working on Transfer Edge now. So Competitive Edge is really, that was the first one I did. It, it was um, really interesting and really helpful. It was kind of what I didn't know I needed. Um, you know, they cover all things from business casual versus business professional attire and eating etiquette, you know, like dining etiquette. And, and you know, 
like as I age, you don't really learn these things in school, but you do need to know these things. And um, competitive competitive edge really helped me get a good grasp on it. Um, also, all three of these are self-paced, so you can take months to complete them. You can take a, a day, you know, if you really want to. So um, that was cool too. Employment edge. Um, that, I have a few more degrees to complete before I'm going to go into the workforce, but I still completed this and actually it was at the perfect time. So Employment Edge taught me to find my angle, you know, it taught me how to, to bring out the best in me and, and that is, in that case it was talking about, you know, in job interviews, um, trying to land a job, but also it's really important for my transfer applications, my scholarship applications. So little things, you, you get a lot from each of them, even if you're not directly going into the employment workforce. Um, it really does put you one step ahead. Um, this organization really just in general puts you one step ahead of the game. And uh, I'm grateful to have crossed paths with this organization. Yeah. Um... I've completed competitive edge and transfer edge. I'm working on my employment edge, but uh, I can certainly give some insight on transfer edge. Um, transfer edge, like the name suggests, it helps you uh, understand the transfer process to um, a university. Um, it teaches you how to uh, do FAFSA and what the steps are. Um, it teaches you how to formulate scholarship applications and resumes. And it actually gives you videos of people that attend Ivy Leagues that were a part of PTK and what they did to get where they are. Um, it really is um, a great benefit for people to take advantage of that um, is just on the PTK website for any PTK member to have access to. Uh, you even get a digital badge when you complete these edges. And this is kind of new which is, it's awesome. You get to put it on like your LinkedIn profile or anything electronically and people can actually, your employers can click on the digital badge and it will uh, basically tell them the credentials that you have uh, in that specific area. So just puts you one step further ahead of what you already are part of the cream of the crop, you know? So make sure you go out there and do those trans, uh, the, the, all the edges. Um, but yeah, overall, Phi Theta Kappa is, <clears throat> such an amazing organization and you know I could gawk on it all day but it's just it's changed my life it really has one thing I just want to add is um, once you accept your membership you have access to these forever so you know you you can always refer back to them and these programs were designed by you know professionals some of the best people they they look for outside resources from people who are specifically trained in things like this so um to have these resources is really really helpful in life that's a great point um so once you're a member you're a member for life um we consider you after you finish from your community college you're just considered a Phi Theta Kappa alumna or alumnus, and you still have access to all of these membership benefits, which is pretty awesome. Um, so if you're interested at all in any of these things, you should strongly consider accepting membership in Phi Theta Kappa um, and checking out some of these resources that we have here. This last slide, we have about five minutes left, um, gives you all our contact information so myself, Melissa, and Paige, we all work in the membership services department at Phi Theta Kappa. And so we're probably the folks you wanna to talk to if you're interested in joining Phi Theta Kappa, if you have more questions about Phi Theta Kappa, um, if you just need more information about what we could do for you, um, what your membership benefits are, what your membership fee is, our office hours are 8.30 to 5 Central Time, Monday through Friday. Um, you can email us at help at ptk.org or ptk.org slash contact. You can fill out a form. Um, we're actually the people who respond to you. And like I said, it's we're all real people here. So you do get a response and a call back. Um, so I highly encourage anyone who's interested to shout out, you know, call us, let us know how we can help you. 
Uh, Melissa and Paige, do y'all have any burning questions that y'all have gotten or anything in the chat box or anything you want to add to before we wrap up? I have lots of questions and um, this is a really good question. Um, it's from Kiana. She asked how to use social media or any other campaign platform to gain more PTK members um, and to join officially. Many of the students have received invitations, but most of them do not think it's legitimate. Um, yesterday, they had their PT PTK Awareness Day, but hardly anyone showed up. So what are some of the things that you would suggest that she could do to get more people to, to join and to understand that PTK um, is legit? We get that a lot, and I hate that that happens. I hate that people question the legitimacy of an organization that just does so much, but we get it. It happens to us too. Um, one of the things that we try to do is just flood people with information. Um, that may just sound like a simple thing, but we have recruitment cards that we, where we outline our membership benefits. Um, we have presentations like this where we explain our membership benefits and offer testimonials from actual students like Jenna and Tyler. Um, I, I think for you specifically, social media is a great way to connect with your student base. And so maybe retweeting, reposting what Phi Theta Kappa International is posting would help you all a little bit. I think what also would be helpful is having some meet and greets and anybody else chime in on this, but I think sometimes it's helpful for students to put a face to an organization. And so if you invite them to come to a meeting, not necessarily for them to pay and become a member, but just to check out a meeting, check out an activity. Um, I'm not gonna lie, refreshments and food and drinks and snacks do help to get your students there. Um, another way that comes to mind almost immediately is because we partner with so many universities, asking a local university's admissions counselor or transfer admissions representative to attend your chapter meeting and be present there would add I mean, waves of legitimacy to your Phi Theta Kappa chapter because we have transfer scholarships at so many different universities. Having a representative from a local university where we do offer a scholarship would be really helpful. Anybody else have any ideas about how to drum up um, just support and awareness at a chapter that's really trying? Yeah, I was, I was going to add, um, Definitely offer yourself to them, you know, extend yourself, uh, offer to take them under your wing for a day just so they can come to a meeting and, and see what it's about and see if it's for them. Um, and one thing that we do at my school to, um, at my college in New Jersey, um, Phi Theta Kappa is very, very popular, but it always hasn't been, hasn't always been like that. Um, we do tabling in the student center during the most congested times. During club days, we do tabling. We have big signs that we um, drag around. Uh, we, oh, selling PTK clothes. I have my list over here. <laughs> selling PTK clothes is a good one because people usually are inclined to ask about it. As far as social media, I definitely think it's good to utilize the social channels. Um, but at the end of the day, I think word of mouth and personal interaction is most effective. Paige, did you have something to add there? Yeah, I'll just piggyback off of what Jenna said. Um, I know a lot of chapters will go live on Facebook and Instagram at their meetings and at their little events that they're having. If they're having pizza, they go live and then those members share that live event and it just gets word out with their other friends on campus saying, oh, that's what PTK is. I got that invitation. So a lot of chapters really utilize the Facebook Live to show everybody what they're about. Yeah, I think that's a great one. Um, for that, that person who asked about that, we would love to talk to you more about what we could help you with because we have a ton of resources. If you go to ptk.org slash toolkit, there's actually some brand new IMPTK pieces that um, you can print out and distribute at your campus. 
but we would love to talk to you more about how we can help because we do offer membership recruitment cards that are actually free for your advisor. Um, and we have some other ideas, so reach out to us definitely. Were there any other questions that maybe we didn't cover that y'all saw in the chat box or the Q&A box? Or did we cover all of them? We just received one, Ariel, and um, the, the student said that they have about 180 members, um, but only 10 to 8 students show up. And I know it's something that we talk about. And says the rest of them insist on having nothing to do with PTK. I tried everything. What else could I do? I wish I could say that was a unique problem, but it's not a unique problem. That happens at a lot of chapters where it's kind of like you have a huge membership base and then the same five people or 10 people in your case show up to the meetings and basically run the chapter. Um, I think you have to get innovative, you know, like really maybe take a day and do some campaigning around your campus. Maybe get some of those four year school representatives there. Um, to really talk to your chapter members about what they can do and what sort of transfer scholarships they have. Another way that I like to, some people are like, eh, but you have to assign people some things to do to kind of get them involved. So if you give some of your members who do show up some homework, I don't mean real homework, I just mean like, hey, make sure at the next meeting you bring five members with you to the next meeting. Like something as simple as that um, you could maybe drum up some support that way. But that that is that is a question we get all the time. Go ahead, Jenna. Um, at my college, so we have a lot, like hundreds of PCK members, but we also have a really big board too. And it, it wasn't always like that. So what we do and what um, we found to be most effective is start right off the bat with fellowships. So the actual, the reason why I got involved was, yes, that project, but first I, I knew okay, students and we, I live in New Jersey, we live right by New York City, so we had a, a field trip, it was a fellowship event to New York, and we didn't talk about PTK, we didn't talk about school, we just, we played cards, we went to a food festival, we walked around Brooklyn, it was a really, really good time where we got to make friends with each other, and once that bond was formed, then we all wanted to come back to the meetings because we genuinely enjoyed spending time together. So yeah, that's an awesome suggestion. Um, hopefully that helped y'all. It's three minutes after the hour. Are there any last questions that we can answer? Anything, Melissa, that you're seeing? We probably touched on many of the things that folks have asked about already. Um, but like I said, we really do want you to reach out to us if you have any follow up questions. We would love to be able to answer and help you all. Our contact information is on the screen there. Um, do, does anybody on the panel have any closing words? Any last thoughts? Just feel free to reach out to me too if you need anything. Like, I'm more than happy to provide it or, you know, just chat. Um, you can find me and Tyler both, I don't know, I don't know if Tyler, but I think I'm just saying, you can find us on social media and um, our emails are first name, first name, period, last name at pck.org. Thanks, Jenna. Anybody else? Melissa, I see you're unmuted. So I'm like, I know you probably have something to say. Oh, no, wait, now you're muted. If you haven't joined, join. If you know friends, make them join. Drop the mic. That was like Melissa and out. I know, like, come on. Um, Tyler, Paige, y'all have any final thoughts here? I was gonna say, we are getting ready to turn 101 years old. We've been around for a very long time. If your chapter has invited you to join, you have earned that membership. Reward yourself for your hard work. Join today. Yeah, um, and you know, Phi Theta Kappa is all about those scholarships. So if you're thinking about joining the Fall Scholarship app, it's gonna be due in a month. So now is the prime time to join and get those scholarships. 
Thank you all so much. Um, hopefully you guys got some information out of this and we're here to help you all. So we hope you have a great rest of the day and we hope to hear from you soon and we hope to welcome you as members of Phi Theta Kappa very soon. So we'll go ahead and end it here. Thank you all for joining us. <laughs>